So the a very important message that uh, these questions are not just try out things that uh, probably if there are so choices is some kind of in, uh, that you have to investigate and see what are these things just try to learn those things. So shall we move to the another question? Uh, yes, so we'll look at the same question mm -hmm. but in a different context. I like see. We have the question here, what are the processes manufactured by Advanced Micro Devices Incorporated? So it's the same question but if the students have a clear look at the answers, it says Sempron, Duron, Celeron, Athlon and Pentium. So now our concept behind this is, uh, this question looks like a question straight out of the book but uh, uh, the computer systems field cannot be documented once and forgotten. Like mm -hmm. it, it's a continuously developing field. So we do not have always we do not have up to date information in books. So students have to learn to find out more information from outside other resources, maybe the mm -hmm. internet. And we keep on updating our LMS so okay. through the LMS and other resources. So if students have this ability and the will to learn more yeah. then these type of questions will actually help students to score more because mm -hmm. the more they want to learn the more marks they should get so we follow that principle and uh, basically the question assesses again that describe the main components of the of a computer system so that's the uh, main learning objective okay. we are going to cover here now this is uh, categorized into an advanced question because here we do not have a straight answer out of a book or whatever material we mm -hmm. supply but students have to go out and find out more. So this is very important that students who have a genuine interest and keenness for learning mm -hmm. will get, gain higher marks. But that does not mean that uh, students are going to gain, uh, students who do not have that ability are not gaining any marks because for example if you look at the answers here okay. uh, we talk about the Sempron which is one of the most modern processors manufactured by advanced micro devices mm -hmm. which is a uh, basically a mobile version of mm -hmm. their uh, Athlon processor and uh, we have the Duron which we talked about earlier and we have the Athlon which we also talked about earlier so here if the students actually read the recommended text they would know the answers are Duron and Athlon mm -hmm. but if they had gone the extra uh, step to learn more they mm -hmm. would also know that the Sempron is also a processor manufactured by advanced same micro devices. So very interesting same questions uh, given in a two different modes so still uh, the students if you have the basic knowledge you can answer some of the choices some of the uh, uh, at least a part of the question and if you have a uh, good understanding you can answer the the whole question correctly and uh, so uh, that's those are the two different types of questions and uh, uh, can we have a look on the, some other types uh, well <coughs> actually uh, we can look at another type of question uh, basically uh, the question is what technology did the ENIAC which was the first generation computer used and we have five answers mm -hmm. VLIs are very large scale integrated circuits we have integrated circuits vacuum tubes transistors and microprocessors so we have five answers like we have in all MCQs mm -hmm. and uh, basically the concept behind this is uh, this is a moderate question because here students should be able to identify what the generation was and then relate it to a Mm -hmm. particular type of computer because we are talking about computer history here and if the students know what the generations are then they should be able to relate it to a particular type of computer so the ENIAC they should know that it's a first generation and they should know that basically what device was used in the first generation of developing computers so we expect a little bit more higher level of thinking in students mm -hmm. to uh, answer this question so that's why we call it a moderate question so uh, important thing that what we can observe in this question is this is a, a degree program. It's where we expect students will have a knowledge not only the latest things about also the evolution of the computing and the new terms and what's the history what is really happening today. So sometimes the people may find the, the content is not very uh, interesting yes. because it's old stuff yes. but still uh, this knowledge is very important so if you know the history so they can answer some of the questions and it corresponds to a, uh, some learning uh, 
objective here, uh, very important learning objective? Uh, yes, basically it uh, uh, covers the learning outcome or learning objective, summarize the evolution of computers from the mechanical computers to the UNIVAC. Now if students have actually done this, they should realize that uh, computers started off being mechanical. So you had gears and uh, levers working and you had wheels and it was mechanical. But later onwards electric electricity was invented and then computers became more or less electronic devices. Mm -hmm. So students should be able to realize this and also UNIVAC which was basically developed by the uh, for the military and uh, uh, we talked about the ENIAC yeah. which was basically developed for educational mm -hmm. purposes. So you had two development which were both first generation mm -hmm. and uh, it is important that students understand the evolution of computer technology so that they can understand the present and they can forecast into the future like what the computer technology will be in the future. And uh, if you also look at the answers for these questions, uh, the answer is vacuum tubes mm -hmm. because uh, we talk about the first generation and the first generation mm -hmm. of computers use vacuum tubes and the second generation use transistors. Mm -hmm. The third used uh, integrated circuits and basically the fourth generation used uh, very large scale ICs and microprocessors. I see. So uh, where we will assess uh, your ability and uh, capabilities of summarizing and uh, answering a question that's very important just uh, keeping uh, in memory what really happened is not enough you should be able to relate those things when you go to answer these questions uh, so uh, here the terms also very important to learn now for example in the there is a choice cause VLIC so you have to find out what stands for the VLIC very large integrated circuit Again, you can uh, use these questions to learn a lot of things if you don't know, if you have not learned those things from the text. So, shall we move to another type of question? Well, uh, yes. Uh, example 4, or the fourth question we're going to talk about is very important because uh, this basically uh, moves out of all text that is available and actually uh, checks the practical knowledge of students because computer systems cannot be learned by just reading a book, they should have some hands-on experience. So in this uh, case, we talk about uh, the question is which of the following statements are true with respect to a standard keyboard? Now it's mm -hmm. a standard keyboard, they should know what it is. And uh, the answers are the control key keys are located closer to the space bar than the alt keys. And the second one is the number pad has an enter key. The third one is the numlock has to be off to use the navigation keys on the number pad. The caps lock is located below the sh left shift key. Delete and backspace key keys delete characters in a similar manner. So if we look at this question, uh, it is not straight out of the text. It, we, can, we can call it a moderate the question because we talk about the keyboard mm -hmm. and we assume that most students use the keyboard. But also students who have practical experience and who have really used the keyboard because anybody could type using a keyboard but they should know how to type properly. So if they have uh, the practical